Let's make a snow globe. Hi, I'm Susie Dinkle, writer, garden coach, and landscape designer, bringing you inspiration and information to help you better utilize, enjoy, and improve your outdoor space. I'm also bringing you today a snow globe that we're going to make, and I'll show you how to do this. I consider these sorts of uh, floral arrangements and, and little objects as the accessories in a garden, and landscape design means more than just putting in plants and hardscape. It also means putting in the jewelry that makes our gardens sparkle. And I do like bringing things indoors, although this one I'm planning to use outside in a porch makeover that you'll be seeing sometime very soon. I raided my husband's acupuncture office to find these cups. They're used therapeutically, but you didn't come here to hear about that. Uh, I think you want to see me make a snow globe, and I, I'm happy to do it. I'm excited to do it. I've been looking forward to it because I'm also going to be using what I consider to be uh, non-toxic or low-toxic and fairly eco-friendly materials. And I will talk about that another time. This is the time for celebration and joy, and we don't need to get heavy. So let's get light, as light as snow. Here we go. Some of the materials I'm using in this project are, of course, my husband's glass cup. This happens to be a vintage cup. I'll also be using marble dust and some baking soda for the snow. And I'll describe the differences between using those two things, the advantage of using one over the other. The marble is a byproduct, I believe, of mining the marble that's used in countertops and things like that. And then, of course, baking soda. Everyone has that in their kitchen, right? So this should be a quick, easy project for those who already have a cup or something that looks like this cup. And by the way, you can turn this cup the uh, direction so that the opening is toward the top and just use it as a regular base. But we're going to turn it so the opening is on the bottom. This is a super fun project to do with kids. They get to choose, of course, the little trinkets and things that will go inside their snow globe. How fun is that? I have a few things down here to show you up close. But first, I want to demonstrate how I get the inside of the globe to look a little bit snowier. Here we go. To get the snowy effect inside of the snow globe, I'm going to spray it first and inside, and then I'm going to sprinkle some dust. Now you could use a sticky spray if you wanted it to be permanent. I don't. I just want it to hold there for several days. It can actually hold for a week or more before you really start to notice it falling. But if it does, it just looks like snow, right? That's fun. The effect I'm going for is a little bit coming out, is that. It's just a little dusting of snow inside. That was done with the marble dust. This was done in this goblet with just a little bit of baking soda. Now this, if it gets wet, if the baking soda gets wet, it's just gonna disintegrate. That's the disadvantage of using baking soda. Uh, however, the marble dust just doesn't disintegrate. So what you do is you take your little globe and then spray the inside with I'm using something that will disappear over time and it will hold it there though for a while it's not sticky it's a thymol spray for disinfecting it smells really good I use it all the time it doesn't bother my skin or, or anything like that or respiratory and you just want to give it a very light spritz hardly anything Right. Certainly don't want to make it so wet in there that it would disintegrate the baking soda. And then you come along and just take a very fine dusting of uh, your baking soda or your rock dust. I'm going to use some of the marble. Okay. Sprinkle it inside. It's okay if some of the bigger chunks get inside. That's alright. And then 
just move it around like that. I'm going for a very, very light coating. I don't want to cover the whole thing up because I want to be able to see what's underneath or in, in the globe. Let me show you how to assemble the globe. You could use anything as a base for the globe to hold. This is an antique or vintage saucer that I've just put some baking soda into and then the globe would go, uh, your object would go on top and then the globe would go on top of that. I'm going to be using a basically a cupcake stand I think it would be mostly. It has a dome that goes on top and this would be pretty too. If you don't have a globe, a uh, round globe, just use um, a kind of uh, bakery stand like this. Or you could even use a, an apothecary jar, a terrarium type jar, anything like that that gives you the effect. Don't go feel like you have to go racing out to buy anything. Just make do with what you have, get the concept down, and then probably you'll run into a, uh, some of these vintage cups eventually. So I'm using, I'm using this um, uh, cake stand or this little cupcake stand and I've already sprinkled some of the rock dust on it and some of the little chunks to make it look like it's rocks covered with snow. Now, you could make this a really simple display by just putting in some natural objects, you know, the star anise, I'll show you that up close. You can, I'm gonna go the, I'm gonna go this direction, the warm and woodsy a little bit of some greenery. I was looking for a mercury glass ball, but I don't have anything that's small enough to, to fit inside the cup. But you could use things like crystals or something colorful. You could use something like this. That's a matte finish bisque acorn, which is really sweet. You could use jewelry inside. That's always blingy and fun. I'm going to see what I can do with this and then I will show you how to assemble it. So this is the tricky part, is getting the dome on top with the inside, the, what you want to put on the inside to stay where you want it to stay. There's all kinds of things you could use for that. You could use wire and you could use um, glue and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm making it simple. All right. I am going to take my little bit of greenery and measure it inside the cup. I see that I need about that much, so I'll clip it off right there. First, I want to see if I can put a little piece of star anise toward the top of this and get it to stay where I want it to stay. We'll see. You could glue this on if you wanted to. I'm going to use the star anise afterwards, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it in the cup and then just set it down. And rotate this until it settles and is secure. Okay, there it is. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, the anise stayed where I wanted it to stay and it's just a little, this is just a warm and woodsy little bit of green and brown inside of there with the white. If I wanted to make it a little more blingy, I would add uh, some silver or I would add some crystal or something like that. Let's do that. The other way to assemble this is to put the items in there first and then put the snow globe on top of it. And I'll demonstrate that. You can make your little mound and this is where these little rocks come in very handy because you can use them to stick your uh, 
sprigs into whatever you use. This is a cutting from my yard, just um, a camisepress of some kind. There we go. That's hanging, that's staying upright <laughs> pretty well, I would say. Okay. And then let's put something a little blingy down in there, like a crystal. I kind of like that idea. And then we will put the star anise up toward the top. Fiddly, isn't it? Maybe I should have glued it, but I don't want to. I'm gonna take the globe and just tuck it down right like that, and very carefully, so I don't jostle the inside too much. Just move that around. Sometimes you have to get in there with your fingers or a tool to shove the rocks one way or the other. But eventually, it will settle. There we go. You, of course, will probably have all kinds of ideas of what to put inside of this. But this works for just a very quick little snow globe effect. Up to you so you can see. There we go. Hey, how about some crystal over there? Sometimes you have to rotate it a little bit to get the coating into the right position so you can see what it is that you put inside of there. There we go. I've fiddled it, turned it around to where I got it to where I can view the star anise that I put inside. And we're not quite finished yet. A few little touches to put on top. You could either do it on top, but that's not what I really meant. What I meant was around the edges to make it look like perhaps something is poking out from the inside or has escaped. I have I have two things. I have some sedum that is nice. You could use moss. You could use anything you wanted to. But this is very tiny. The idea is to make it kind of small so that it looks in proportion to what you've put inside. It doesn't have to be. That's, you know, you're the artist. So we have some sedum and also some just little tiny bits of dianthus carnation foliage that looks really good right now and it's that silvery gray. I love dianthus. I have a good childhood memories of using it and, and growing it. So that's something I like. I like to include whenever I can. And to me, to my eye right here, it just looks like some blades of grass perhaps that are trying to emerge and that's all it needs. Just going to do a little asymmetrical, not going to overdo it. You don't need to put items under the globe either. You could just put them around the globe, especially if it's too difficult to get it to be arranged inside. This goblet turned upside down it has just the dusting of, of the baking soda inside, candle on top, and I think that would look really lovely next to a bed stand or on a bed stand next to the bed.
I hope this demonstration of the mechanics of how to put together a snow globe-like arrangement has inspired you to look around your home at the objects you already have to see if you can do something like this. And again, it's so fun to do with kids. Until the next time, I'll be dreaming of you in the garden. Bye.